hello guys welcome to another tutorial now this tutorial is on how to make a turtle neck sit perfectly on your neck now this is what a client sent to me so the focus for today is on how to make a perfect turtle neck now i have this that i've already sewn now what is left is just the neck so you go ahead and fix your zip you have to fix your zip up to the neck now for the lining you're not going to turn the neckline can you see it so after that um the neck width and the neck depth for a perfect turtle neck is if your neck is slim if you notice your client's neck is slim use two inches for the neck width and three inches for the depth but if your client's neck is fat, use two and a half inches for the neck width and three inches for the depth. I hope you understand. So you are going to measure the neckline. Can you see? Fold your zip inside. The way you see me folding my zip inside. Then you measure from one neck from the back yeah look at this when you open your zip you have to fold it inside then you measure from one back zip to the other side so you have to do this carefully whatever it gives you is what we are going to use so when i measure the round neck of this i got 18 inches So when you get to the end also also fold your zip inside yes then i got 18 inches i also repeated this because you have to repeat it as many times as possible for you to get the exact measurement so this is me doing that now merry christmas to you guys and um i wish you all a prosperous new year hope you guys are okay hope you guys are good i love you all so this is the second time i am doing it and i got 18 inches so now we are good to go i'm going to drop this aside and I'll take a paper. Now this paper is folded into two. After that, I went ahead to rule a straight line at the end there. So after ruling a straight line, we are going to start with the measurements. So guys, I'm going to measure 18 divided by 2. Like I said, the paper is folded into 2. So 18 divided by 2, we have 9 inches. So I indicated the 9 inches there. And I'm just going to rule it upward a little. After getting the 9 inches, I am going to take back my dress. And I'm going to measure from the back here to the shoulder joining one side of the back to the shoulder to where I join the shoulder. Now I have three and a half inches. So whatever yours gives you from these folded parts, I'm going to measure the three and a half inches. So on this part here, I'm going to go up by 1.25 1.25 so when you take your tape that is one then you can't want to so i went ahead to extend the line up to the 1.25 then i take my curve ruler you have to use a curve ruler and i'm going to connect it to the from the three and a half to the 1.25 now
I actually watched this, you know, and I thought to share it with you guys. Because after trying it, I love the outcome. Now, guys, I'm going to measure 2 inches starting from the folded line, from the folded paper. So I'm going to start measuring 2 inches and I'm going to be following the shape of the line. Can you see it? You place it and you follow the shape of the line up to the 1.25 measurements there. So this is it. I'm just going to use my Biro to just blend it up to make it more visible. Then I use my curve ruler as well. I'm not using too much curve. I'm just going to be, you know, just going to connect it up to that point. Then the reason why I did this is I want to show you guys something. So when I really talk to that point, I'm not going to take my measurement all over again. That is the 9 inches because anything that has a curve tends to be bigger than the actual measurement. So when I measure it again, I have my 9 inches. You can see that it is a little bit longer than the 9 inches. So I use my curve ruler to just extend it upward like that now this color is done it's not difficult so I'm going to cut out that shape Now this is it, after cutting we have this, now I'm going to be writing back, that is B on the folded part, then front on the part that is not folded, I will repeat it at the back also, then I'm going to slit it into two. After slitting it into two, you're now going to place the two fronts side by side, yeah. Can you see it? So we have two fronts. Now do not place it on each other. Just let it touch each other that way then. I use my tape to secure it down. We are not going to be cutting it on the fabric. So whatever fabric you are using, the fabric is also folded into two. And I went ahead to use my pins to secure it down. Then I'm going to use my biro to mark half half inch all round now the reason why i'm using my biro is because i don't want it to be too big if i use a chalk you know a chalk tends to add to your measurements so i use a biro to mark half inch all round then i'm going to cut After cutting, this is what we have. I remove my pins and I'm going to be gumming it. Now I have this. This is a color stay. It's not the thick color stay. It's also called the paper, a medium gum stay in the market. It is thicker than the normal paper gum. So I cut two, then I went ahead to gum it. Now you just have to place them on each other when you are gumming so that one will not be bigger than the other if you gum them separately. Then after gumming, we have this. So I'm going to take one, just where you see me touching like that. I'm going to be folding half inch on just one of the color. After folding, then I have this um, loophole for buttons. If you don't have a loophole, go ahead and use the fabric to form a a loop for your buttons then you place it inside and you place the one that you folded half inch on top of it it will not get to the end there then I'm going to sew half inch 
so after sewing the half inch from that point to the other side i went ahead to trim it then i gave it a notch so we are going to be turning the collar now so i went ahead to turn it out properly and i also used my scissors to push out the pointy part so it will come out properly then i gave it a good press so our collar is almost ready we are going to be fixing it to the neck of our dress now so you go ahead and take your dress now from the inside of the collar can you see it when you place your collar on it the way you folded your zip inside is the way you are going to fold it inside now i went ahead to pin it all around it is advisable for you to pin so that one will not be longer than the other i pinned it all around now when i pin to some point i went to the other side to pin it yeah before i now continue pinning so we are going to be sewing with half inch after sewing guys this is it i removed the pins and i'm going to be trimming the collar to avoid bulkiness now what i'm trimming is the collar not the neckline of the dress <coughs> so that in case there's anything you, you can lose the collar and fix it all over again so i trim the collar just the collar inside then you place it on each other on it and i'm and i sew top stitch on top of it so our color is ready it is very simple if you enjoy this tutorial kindly give me a like let me know your thoughts in the comment section always drop a comment for me guys so this is it i put it on it is not my dress it's the client tone like i said if you have a slim neckline like mine use two for the width and the depth should be three inches so i'll fix the buttons and the dress is ready it is looking beautiful thank you guys